I love the chase in the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running, I always take... Miss Tammy Reese was coming on to a team that was trying to find its way and looking for its next chapter, and now that next chapter has regular season champions of the A-10 in it. Miss Reese, how are you? Dan. I'm doing well. I, I got to say, I mean, listen, I, I can't believe I have to remind myself that you've been there for a little bit, right? Because I feel like you just got to Rhodey and now we're here. From the moment you stepped in to the Rhode Island Rams women's basketball program to now, what have you seen develop and change for the better? I think the first thing that, that changed was the culture. Um, from the people that we recruited, whether it be on staff, our support staff, or our players, um, they all we all had one goal in mind, and that's to become become a successful program. But more importantly, do it the right way. Um, and culture was everything, and I think that's what changed the most from day one to where we are now. And it's the reason we're the most successful is. We never sacrificed our morality, our value system, our culture for wins. And, you know, I'm proud to say that because we have unbelievable human beings um, involved in every aspect of our program. And that's how winning's done. It's done with great people. You know, and you and I talked about it last show that, you know, cutting corners isn't the way to do it. And like you had spoken about learning through your career that, you know, winning at any cost is not truly winning and it's it's not the right way to do it and there are people that do that and you have maybe some success here and there but ultimately when you win doing things the right way caring the right, right way looking for good people good quality people and not just talent is how you build a culture and sustain success so for you to see the team be regular season champions in the a10 what is it like for you, like you said, to stick to your guns, stick to the morals and values, learn the things you've learned over time? When you see a team win that's built on morality, goodness, values, being together and not just being raw talent, what does that do for you as a coach? It's just extremely self-satisfying. Um, you're proud of the work you've done and it means more to me to have that feeling and and really enjoy it than to just win a championship and you know you cut corners, you know you did it on talent alone, you know you sacrificed your morality and you did some things to win. Um, it's not the same feeling. It's not. And that's why I have a lot of pride in, in this championship on how we, we did it. And we did it the right way. Um, that, as a coach, is the most self-satisfying thing, that we had a vision for the program, we saw it through, and in the end, it paid off. And to watch that develop to fruition is the most satisfying thing. That's why when people ask me, what are you experiencing right now, I just said, I'm completely satisfied. Um, from start to finish, from A to Z. Uh, every piece of this puzzle and how we did it. And, and that's what just really warms my heart is, is the way we did it. You know, and, and I love the video that when this was secured and there were zeros on the clock against Dayton, you ran off to the sideline and gave one very specific hug there. Bring me into that moment who you ran off with and, and gave that hug to. You know, right after the game, I, I do it after every game because um, my first supporters, my biggest supporters, the people who sacrificed their whole life so I could, you know, be successful in school and sports are my parents. And yeah. so, you know, when you have uh, overall emotion and you reach a goal, um, you run right to the people that enabled you to to do what you do and besides my team and my staff you know my parents my and my um my significant other crystal those are the people that if i didn't have them in my corner i could not do what i do i listen crystal holds it down at home i could never be become a coach and put the hours in and the without someone taking care of holding it down the household the animals the 
everything. And then obviously my parents um, who sacrificed everything to give me the game of basketball and whatever I needed to be successful. And so you run right back to your support system to thank them um, because they're the reason you're on this journey and they're part of the success. And so those, I ran right to my, my dad, Crystal and my mom. And those were the the first people I, I, I could show my gratitude and my love for. You know, I mentioned that on purpose because it's a reminder I think to anybody that was watching of never forgetting where you come from, never forgetting who was there for you from day zero. And you've been that person. I was actually having a conversation last night about you. So if your ears were ringing, they were good, Tammy. But I was, I was having a conversation about, I said, you know, Tammy and I have talked for so many years. And when she first got to Rhode Island, you know, and, and you're building this team and, and, you know, your schedule is more open. I said, you know, Tammy and I would talk about, we talked about it last show. You said, Hey Dan, we did our stuff and we did all that. And you said, now I got 10 things going on. And they're like, you're going here, here, and here today to do these interviews. But you've always connected with me, texted me back, gave me a call, got on the show. So I get emotional in the sense of you've never forgotten me, the better you've gotten, the more you've gotten and the more you've done. So when you win, as I was saying last night to a good friend, there's coaches you know that win and you're happy for them. And there's coaches you know that win, that you have more of a connection to, that you just feel their heart and you feel who they are and they've never forgotten you and they've always gave you time no matter how busy they've gotten. So when you win, Tammy, I get worked up. I just want you to know that. <laughs> so. You know, I appreciate that. Um and again, you roll with people that are there with you from day one, where they believe in you no matter what. Um, that it's not because you're winning, it's not because you're successful that now they come around. They they were part of the journey and the process, and and that's been you, Dan, from day one. I mean, we've just, you know, we you've always supported me, um, women's basketball in general, which I absolutely love about you, all sports. Um, and so that's really, really important. Like you said, you, you never forget where you come from and who helped you get there. The only person that wasn't present, I think, um, when we won the championship that, li listen, I wouldn't even have started probably playing this game if it wasn't for Mr. T, who, you know, was my teacher, taught me how to get it done in the classroom, became my, my trainer, became my mentor in basketball. And, you know, it was a little bit that it's the only face I didn't see on the sideline, um, which, you know, for one reason or another, he just, he could not be there. And so I got to send him a shout out and much love and much gratitude. Um, and I just wish he was there to experience it with us. Yeah. You know, and, and it's great that you mentioned Mr. T I, I, I have, like, when you, as soon as you said that I have one that I call, uh, his name is Mr. DeSantis and we called him Mr. D and he was my principal growing up. But I call him Feeny D because I'm a Boy Meets World fan and I always feel like he's my Feeny and he always gives me that advice. So as soon as you said Mr. T, I'm like, oh, Feeny. So, you know, I, I totally get it. I, I want to go think, a little. Go ahead, sir. But I think everyone, you know, we have those special people in our lives that touch us in a way that, you know, again, you remember them always because. They're the one that guides you and, and gets you to where you need to be and shape and mold you. And we all have those coaches, those teachers, those mentors that mean so much to us. And it's really people don't know how much you touch people's lives and, and direct them. And, you know, that's why it's it's, you know, really important to pay it forward and try to I do the same. I try to be the Mr. T to the next generation. It's why I coach. Tammy Reese here with us, University of Rhode Island Rams women's basketball head coach and keeper of the 8-10 regular season championship. Tammy, when you walked in, I know the type of competitor you are. I feel that. You know, you, you I think you enjoy more than most coming into a situation where people are like, oh, you're not going to get top five. You're not going to be top two, top three. And here's Tammy gone. We're going to win a championship. To be able to put that shirt on that hat and you were having some fun with pieces of that net as well. When you're a 10 regular season champions, I know there's more life. I know there's more work to be done. I understand that. 
from the coaching perspective. But there's probably so many people that never thought Rhode Island would come close to it, and here you are as regular season champions. How vindicating and beautiful of a moment on the court was that and continues to be? Well, I'm a builder. I, I love taking things, you know, I'm, I'm a Rocky and a Rudy. I wasn't this amazing athlete, superstar. And, you know, I I had to work my whole life to get what I wanted. It wasn't just given to me. Um, and so I'm, I, I love the process of building something and, and going from A to, to Z. And this job for me was a no brainer. It's like, it's a dog. We get to shape it and mold it. And it didn't really bother me that, that people say, why are you taking that job? Like it, it's never been successful ever. You're not gonna, you're not going to be a, why don't you just wait and get your BCS job or get a better job? And I said, I, I'm thinking differently. I, I think it's a sleeping giant, you know, and I think I can build it. In fact, I know I can build it with the right plan, with the right people. And so when we actually, the buzzer went off and, we actually put those shirts on again. All I could think about was my first day on the job. It's like my, it flashed all in front of my face, like how bad we were initially, the culture, everything. And then, you know, to get to that moment, to put that shirt on, yeah. it was no better feeling in the world because it wasn't given to us. I didn't inherit a, a great program that fight for championships, my, myself and my staff. We built it. And when you build something from your bare hands, you you do it. You have so much more pride in it. So you've earned it. And so for me, whether the it didn't bother me, the naysayers, it it didn't because I knew what we could do. And that is it's one of the best moments in your life when you work for something, really work for it that's when you have them it's it feels the feeling is it no better feeling that's why the hard is what makes it great you savor it so much more than you know it, it, i have the best players all i got to do is throw them on the court <laughs> we're just going to beat you anyway it's no this had to be built that's why it makes it so special you know and and why i know we've talked about this a little bit but why Rhode Island? What what was it? I know you you've spoken to me about the leadership there and the the deep meetings that you had, but like you said, this program hadn't been successful. You weren't inheriting a champion. So, what about this was a sleeping giant? Like you said, what about this bare bones? Did you think you could walk in here and start building it? Because I agree with you, and I love it, and I live every day building something out of thin air. Why was Rhode Island the place to do it? You know, you got to know who you are as a person first, what you want in your life and, you know, what fits you the best. So you really have to know you, you know, I can't coach in the Midwest. I can't, I, I know my quality of life. I know my happiness. I can't coach down, down South. I can't, I'm a New York person who acts like a New Yorker. I know my characteristics. I know what I want. I know how I do it. And I know what I'm compatible with. And so when I'm looking at different areas and different schools, my quality of life and me played a huge part into what was going to be a good job. Yeah. Rhode Island, East Coast. <laughs> Rhode Island, close to my recruiting grounds, close to my stomping grounds. Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, D.C. I fit the East Coast. I love the New England area. My parents are three hours away. And then when I met with administration, when I met with Thorby Orn, and people, people just take jobs, they don't understand the importance of relationships. Yeah. They don't understand compatibility, vision, and your support system. So you're only as good as your AD and your administration. And how many resources are they going to pump into you? What kind of support? that man could finish my sentences and i just met him i've had more interaction with thor during the process than i did with most ad's and i know i was only an assistant coach but i watch how they work i've watched a lot of ad's good bad and indifferent and thor 
God rest his soul and peace today, Coach Terry Holland. One of the best ADs as a player I've ever seen at Virginia. Thor reminded me of Coach Holland, of his generosity, his kindness, his compassion, his empathy, and his belief in sports, his love for sports, mentorship. And so we vibed. And when I call vibe, we vibed. And I knew that was a genuine relationship. Now, four years later, we text, we talk, we, it's like we're friends. It's not like he's my boss. It's, it's different. And so when I saw that and then visited here, all I needed to see was the resources. I know I can fundraise. You, you don't have to worry about that. I'll get money. And that went into my decision. Again, the people, it was like a family down here. Uh, um, where I could walk into anyone's office for, it didn't matter. They could come in mine and it fit me like a glove. Me. It, it wasn't about the job, the necessary, the status, the money, the, it was about the right fit where I thought I could be successful. I did the same thing as a player. I chose the school that fit me the best. And that's why it was Rhode Island and no other school. And not that, believe you me, not like I had a million offers, but there were a couple schools that, you know, along the, the area that, that I was looking at and I was interested in, but Thor sealed the deal. The people at Rhode Island sealed the deal. So, and then knowing me, I had to match myself to where I, I think I could be the most su successful and accepted, number one, as a human being, um, my lifestyle, my characteristics. Um, and again, I'm older, so I know me. I base my decision making now on what makes me happy, not money, not status. And there's nothing for me to have to prove other than all I want to do is be happy. Yeah. Tammy Reese, University of Rhode Island, Rams women's basketball head coach, A-10, regular season champions and more life to come. Every time I talk to you, I'm inspired. And when we talk about music and movies, I realize that as much as I know, I don't know as much as you. <laughs> so, I don't know about that. <laughs> so, but I will say this, Tammy, you are my spirit animal for when it comes to music and movies and understanding things. So I hope that there's other people in this world like us, because I love that connection that I feel like I'm having conversations about me. I was doing it last night. So having a conversation about music and I can't, I get to a certain point with people and then I hit a wall and I'm like, why has nobody heard this? You know what I mean? Yet you and I talk about it all the time. So, you know, Tammy, that's what I'm saying is there has to be more of us than not but it's hard to find people that just like good. You and I will talk about this music and I get it and I feel it and I'm living in that world. And then I talk to somebody else and I'm like, okay, one, two, three of them the same. And then after that, I'm just completely lost. And so leading into cool. that, go ahead. What were you gonna say? No, go ahead, go ahead. So I was, I was gonna say two parts. Number one, is there anybody out there like us that you know when it comes to actually knowing good music. And the B part of that is, what song was played in the locker room when y'all became champions? Well, first, it's funny. I connect on the on social media a lot with people, fans that, you know, they're, they all hit me up and they're like, will you please do your motivational morning videos with good music? And, and it pumps me up the day and we love it. Um, which I will continue once the season's done. You know, I don't, I don't want to get, you know, people go, you're not focused. You know, listen, we're coaches. We only live a small amount of time coaching. We do have other hobbies and, and we like to have fun and do those things. You don't have to be a stoic coach to yeah. be a good coach. Um, but I'll, I'll get to the videos and the music again, but I've connected with so many music junkies, movie junkies that are just, you know, follow us on social media. And there's one, his name's Rob. He's from um, Rhode Island. And dude loves, like, every night he's out at the bonfire. He'll be hitting up whatever mood he's in. He'll send me screenshots. <laughs> you, you remember this one? And I'm like, oh, God, Rob, I love it. <laughs> um, we'll go back and forth. But there are people out there that 
you know, get inspired by music and, and by movies. And, and I'm a very emotional person. So the music, it gets me for whatever reason, when I need to be sad, I, I play a little when I need to be pumped up when I'm, and so I get inspired by, by music and movies. I really do. When, when I need to watch a good movie before a game the night before, and I need my Rocky two, the end of Rocky two, or I need a little Rudy, or I need some Hoosiers, or I need, remember the Titans all it, it, again, it's inspiring for me. And that's what I, I take from music and movies. And all I know is we start every game with Whitney Houston's national anthem. Yep. And I mean, every, game. they are, are, facilities people have to, you know, ask me, listen, it's, it's veterans day. We need to, yes, we will change the national anthem. But other than that, as long as I'm a coach here, we'll start it with Whitney Houston period. And that's my good luck charm. And that's the national anthem. I go, it's my go-to the, the music that was playing, they played, we didn't play music in the locker room. We just, we did our song, but on the court, they played a medley of, of different songs, but the one I remember taking our championship pictures, they played Whitney Houston, I Want to Dance with Someone. And that's the only song <laughs> that when it came on, I remember. Um, but it it was mostly, again, we just, we celebrated in the locker room with, with a speech and then we got out of there. But uh, no, you know, definitely there are people out there like us, you know, Dan, that pop culture people that, again, get inspired yeah. through different things. You and I, for me, it's music and, and movies, and that's what gets me gets me going. Yeah, I and mean, people ask me, they're like, what's your thing that you do at night before you, like, what kind of resets you? I said, it doesn't matter when I get in bed. It could be midnight, 1 o'clock, 2 a.m., 10 p.m., whatever it is. I have to watch something funny, and I'm normally putting on stand-up or a sitcom that I like because I have to have that little bit of comedy right before I go to bed, and... And it's like clockwork. And you'll meet people like I don't have a, you know, I don't have a TV in my bedroom. I was like, I got a, I got a big TV in my bedroom. <laughs> so do I. No, but it, it's funny you say that because last night I do the same thing. But I go to the memes on Instagram, and I'll hit off every funny, and they just go. I'll be sending them to people like yo, and just to make them <laughs> laugh. But I'm the same way. I end every night watching some kid. Last night it was about kids. They, oh my god, had me cracking up. I don't know if you've seen the snowman one. No, no. With yet. the little kid building the snowman. No. You gotta see that one. <laughs> and the goat outside. You gotta see the goat with the little kid at the window. I mean, those are just things I like to end my night on a on a, a good laugh. So I am just like you. And last night was no different. I did about thirty minutes of funny memes before I went to bed. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. And in kinda of, in a couple closing notes, that like you just said, a a, a coach you spend you know, people think, you know, coach, you got to be stoic. And every time they see you, you got to be doing something. And I felt the same way as a business owner. I was like, if I take a break in the middle of the day for myself and I go see a movie, what if somebody sees me there? Oh, oh, you're not, you're not editing. You're not doing, you have to have pieces of, we, we talk about Reese's pieces. There's all these parts of you that make you who you are and you're coaching. Yes. And you're practicing and you're looking at film, but you have to remain who you are or else you're not going to be successful in anything you do, including coaching. So I love that you brought up the fact of kind of saying like, hey, everybody, if you see me out there just kind of dancing in my car, it doesn't make me a bad coach. It makes me Tammy Reese. And if I'm not dancing in my car, I'm not going to be able to go to practice the same way. So I appreciate that you said that. Yeah, the best advice I, I was ever given is just be you. Just be your authentic self and... You don't try to fit into a mold. Don't try to be somebody you're not. Um, and that's always worked for me. And I've always been the happiest being able to be who I am. And so that was the best advice I was ever given was just be your authentic self. Whether people like you or not, at least you can live with yourself and be happy with who you are. And so that was the best advice I, I was ever given. We got a, a message that came in here from Greg. Tammy, and I agree with his first statement here. He says, Tammy, you are not old. Because every time you say that you're older, Tammy, I haven't seen you age in a very long time. But <laughs> it's a Tammy, you are not old. But I do vividly remember reading about you breaking Section 9 basketball records on the back pages of the Times Herald record. Best of luck moving forward in the A-10 and NCAAs. 
you know, it, it seems like ages ago. It, this is a cool story. So we're playing for the A-10 championship, and my three besties from high school, I have a lot of besties. We have a whole group, but the three that played on our, our championship undefeated state title team, um, let me give them a shout out. Maura Brady, Beth um, Lindholm, and Tammy Ebers, maiden names, not married names. Yeah. Um, they were in attendance at the game. And before the game, I looked up and I saw all three sitting together and it just brought, brought back unbelievable memories of the day we won our championship together. And it was so cool that they could be there, watch it happen again with me. And then I went to hang out with them afterwards, broke out all the, the pictures of when we won ours, all the high school, um, and so, and it was like 35, it was so many years ago. I did feel old at that time, but it's just, I remember, you remember the best days of your life so vividly with your best people, your best friends. Yeah. And it was like no time passed. It was like, I was back in high school, hanging out with them. And, you know, I've, got, I've had so many great memories, but the best ones you never forget with the best people that you shared them with. And I've had a lot of them, but that was a really cool moment for me um, during the game was to see my, th my three best e teammates up there sitting there and then be able to just reminisce with them and, and go back. It's, it's incredible. And again, people make your experiences, not the experiences. And so I've had a lot of great people in my life. Tammy Reese here, regular season champion, Rhode Island Rams, I'm going to keep saying it because I like saying it. A-10, loving it. And we have coming up here very soon as a final note here, Tammy. We know that your team will be facing off in the Atlantic 10 tournament coming up here March 1st to the 5th. Chase Fieldhouse in Wilmington, Delaware, not too far away. Your thoughts on moving forward, what this team has shown you up to this point. What have been the most pleasant surprises and the biggest improvements as you get set for the postseason? Well, this whole season has really been a huge surprise because we had a lot of unknowns coming into the season. Um, we lost 70% of our scoring and 70% of our rebounding. Four starters. We returned one starter, and our bench did not play heavy minutes. We had three people come off the bench that averaged like 1.9, 1.1, and 1.3 points per game. And so we went out and grabbed a lot of pieces. Yeah. We had to develop our players. And so coming into the season, we had no idea. So many unknowns. Who's going to be in what role? Now, we, we, we had the pieces. How would they embrace those roles? Could they be successful in those roles without experience? And when would we develop great chemistry as a team? How long was it going to take? And so probably by mid non-conference. Now, when we first came back, two players, I was like, my God, my A. Torre and Sophie Phillips, I'm like, they're like different players. Like, they got no time last year and they came on the scene this year and I was like, all right, now, I know we got a center. Um, I know we got, we got some guards and we got a lot of three-point shooting. Then halfway through non-conference, they were just, they were such good kids, young women. They loved each other. They played for each other. No selfishness. I'm playing 10, 11 kids now a game. None of my starters average more than like 20, you know, six, 28 minutes. They don't play 40 minutes. They don't pad stats. Whoever's playing well is in the game, you know, and so it's, it's highly competitive environment. If you're not having a great game and you're not doing what we're asking you to do, I have to sit you because I got six more kids on the bench that they want their turn. And so had no idea that they would become as dominant as they were in their roles and how quickly and great this team became a we. And it's why we won. We are sharing regular season champions with UMass is because they are so unselfish and they love each other and they play for each other. There is no me. There is no complaining. There is no, it is genuine support my sister. And we want to win. And that's all that matters. And that's why we're successful. And they answered them, those unknowns for us, for our, our coaching staff, 
relatively quickly. And it was a complete surprise because again, we lost a lot. I don't know if people realize like we lost most of our team and all mm -hmm. our top players, all our conference players were gone. They became pros. And so even though we still were picked third, which I thought was ludicrous, I'm like, I think we should be around fifth. That's what I placed us um, because of how much we lost. And, you know, the kids, they really did. They just, they came through and it, it really is all on them. They, they um, were amazing teammates to each other. Reese's Pieces back again. Tammy Reese and myself, Dan Tortora, I want to thank you, Tammy, for, like I said at the beginning of our conversation, <clears throat> no matter what's happened and how, and I'm not surprised at all, but your upward trajectory of your career, the busier you get, you always find time, you always answer the call, and you've always been good to me. So again, there are coaches and there's Tammy Reese, and you are in a special place in my heart that goes well beyond just watching a basketball game. I am proud of you. I'm happy for you. I love your humbleness. I love your connection to your family. I love those first three hugs that you gave and the shout out to Mr. T. And, you know, the the similarities that we have and the things that count remind me in the crazy world that we live in today that you should simply just be you. So thank you for being yourself, for going out there and kicking butt, and for making me a roadie fan, because that's your fault, okay? <laughs> uh, I know, I got to squeeze, get a little orange out of you. Get a little Keeney Blue in there, a little bit. Yeah. Um, even though I still support the orange, um, got love for them. I would still watch all the men and women's games. Um, you'd be shocked at how much basketball. I, I got like four screens going at the same time. <laughs> and um, every stop I go at, you leave a little piece of, love at every place you go and uh, i still have love for uba i support them i still have love for syracuse i support them san diego state and it helps mold you into the person you are um and all the people that touch your lives and and along your journey and i've just been blessed with really great places and really great people and dan you're one of them so thank you for always having me always supporting me and um you uh, you know, go roadie. <laughs> the Rams getting set coming up here in just a few days. Postseason play for the 810 regular season champions. Tammy, as always, I appreciate you. The timeless Tammy Reese here with us. God bless. And we'll talk soon. All right. Hey, go out and buy the new pink album. <laughs> I love it. Take care. Be good. All right, Dan. See ya. <laughs>